Hey everyone, how are you guys doing? Hope you guys are doing well. Long time no see. Today, let's go through another lead code problem. 1861, rotating the box. Let's take a look at the problem. You're given an M by N matrix of characters box representing a side view of a box. Each cell of the box is one of the following. It could be a stone, which is a pound, or it could be a stationary obstacle, or a star, or just an empty space, which is represented by a dot. The box is rotated 90 degrees clockwise, causing some of the stones to fall due to gravity. Each stone falls down until it lands on an obstacle, another stone, or the bottom of the box. Gravity does not affect the obstacle's positions, and the inertia from the box's rotation does not affect the stone's horizontal positions. Okay, let's let's take a look at the um, illustration or the picture so that we can better understand what's going on or what's being asked. It's guaranteed that each stone in box rests on an obstacle, another stone, or the bottom of the box. Return an n by m matrix. We are given m by n, and we are asked to return n by m matrix representing the box after the rotation described above. So the Let's take a look at example one. Things will be a lot more clear. We're given this one by three rectangle or box, and it's rotated 90 degrees so that it's when it was laying down, now it's standing up, right? So it looks like this. Why did the stone change? Because of gravity, right? The one used to be on the top. It has to fall down to the to the middle because the middle one is empty. And the one on the right side in the beginning, it doesn't change because it will stay in the bottom because of gravity. All right, so this is a stone, empty, and stone. And now it, the output becomes empty, stone, and stone. All right, easy to understand. Let's take a look at the second example. The second example, all of these, what are these? This is star. Star means obstacle, right? A stationary obstacle, okay. That means if we flip this one, we, if we stand this one box up, all, all of these, they will just fall to this level. If it has a stone here, both of these will just stay stationary as well, right? Because of this obstacle here, they could not fall until to the bottom, although the bottom two spaces are empty, right? Okay, let's take a look at one more example. This is the final example. Okay, final example you can see here. Let's let's take a look at a row by row. So this is the first row, which will become the first column, right? First column because there are obstacles here. So these two stones they couldn't free fall into the bottom, right? So they stay here, and so is this column. This row, it, when we stand it up, it becomes like this: the middle column, and all of the three stones. They just stay there. They couldn't free fall because there's an obstacle here. But for the very last row or the very first column in the output, all of these four stones, they do free fall because there are no obstacles here and there are empty spaces here. So this one dropped down to here. All of these three will move, will drop as, an, as a result of this move, right? So um, the idea is pretty clear and what we're asked to do we're, we're given this m by n box and we're asked to return an n by m matrix so what we'll do is just uh, we'll try to find <laughs> we'll go through this box row by row we'll just mutate the row in place we can mutate the row in place in place although it's not a good idea to modify input this is a lead code problem. It's totally fine in the interview. You might want to clarify with your interviewer whether it's a good idea to modify the input or not. But for here, simplicity reasons, we'll just modify the input directly. We we'll try to move the stones to the right as right side as possible if there's no obstacles blocking the way. And then we'll do this row by row. And in the end, we'll just um, create a new matrix, n by m matrix, and assign each single row to each single column, and then return the output. That's it. OK. Straightforward and easy. Let's put the idea into the actual code. All right, so first, we'll use two variables. One is m, 
I call it box length one is in uh, which is basically one is the number of rows the other is the number of columns so because we have this constraints here M and N is at least one so which means the box will not be null or empty in the beginning and then we'll just go through every single row M I plus plus and how do we go through every single row we'll start from the last column right we check whether the last column is an empty space or a stone or an obstacle right so we'll start from j from n minus minus one j is greater than or equal to zero j minus minus so we'll check if box i and i and j if this one is a box that means it's possibly could be shifted towards the right or in the output box it's free fall right if this is a box we'll check whether we can shift it towards the right so basically we want to find the one right to the right uh, right adjacent on the right side of this of this free of this stone is is a free space is an empty space we'll just call this one empty j plus one so while empty smaller than n and box i the same row and empty is the column equals to an empty space we'll just keep incrementing empty we want to find the last obstacle or the of the one that is not an empty space right so if when this one breaks out we'll check if empty so we'll check if empty is smaller than n that means the empty is still within the columns constraint uh, within the columns boundary and uh, box i empty equals an empty space in this case we can swap this right which means the stone is going to fall freely onto this empty space box i and empty is going to be a stone is going to be a stone and then the where the stone originally fell from this one we're going to make it empty right because it fell into the new position the other case is that uh, it could be that uh, empty falls out of the range oops it could be that empty the last one smaller than within the columns range like this box i empty minus one equals to the empty space we'll just move the stone into this position this one becomes a stone and then box i box j this one becomes an empty space we'll keep moving all of the all of the stones as long as the next one right on the right side adjacent to the adjacent to the stones we'll just keep moving towards the right all right this will do the job this is inside of this first process so after this first process all of the stones uh, possibly just uh, we can think of the gravity not as gravity that pulls things directly vertically to the bottom of the floor but to everything on the right side so after we've drawn all of the stones free fall if there are no obstacles to the right side we can now now we can stand up the box stand up the box so we're just uh, um, we'll just virtually stand up the box by that what I mean is that we can create the result result new char in this case is n by m n was originally the number of columns now it's going to be the number of rows m was originally the number of rows now it's going to be the number of columns and now we can think about how we can traverse this given input after we have done the processing so it's basically this one this one is zero zero now it becomes what it becomes here it becomes zero three right so we're going to traverse through this matrix so first i start from zero 
i smaller than we're still going to start i smaller than so smaller than m right i plus plus m is here zero one two this is the m number of rows and then we need j start from zero j smaller than n j plus plus j plus plus uh, you you can see these uh, these two nested for loops all of the indices and and the boundaries are exactly the same as this one so what this means is that we will traverse through the original input after our processing it's still going to be column by column and row by row right but we'll have to put this one onto here this one here so that means okay the result we need to pay special attention to the result index let's uh, put this one here so the row index of the result is going to be the column index right j is here so where is j j is j is this one this is the j right this is the first column right this is the first column we use j to re represent the original column but this column is becoming this row, right? So that's why this row, we use J. And we go from the very right side, so very right side to the middle, to the left side, right? So we need another variable. I'll just call it I, J, and K. And K starts from what? K starts from N minus one. M is what? M is the number of rows, which is zero, one, two, okay m is 3 in this case 3 minus 1 is 2 which is 0 1 2 right so we have m here and what does m how does m change m going to increment and m is going to decrement every single time no not this not m is going to be k right so this is how we can transpose this we can stand up this box vertically right in the end we'll just return result now let's hit run code and see. Mm, wrong answer. New char, what's going on? Oh, a re-index. Ah, uh, should not M, it should be K. What was I doing? So this is the K, that's why I initialized the base K. Let me run code one more time. Yeah, accept it. All right, accept it. Now let me hit submit. All right, accept it. 100% and 50%. Let me just hit it one more time and see. Okay, now it's 100%. 50 milliseconds. Last time it was 50% and this time is 100%. I guess it's, it's just that it doesn't have enough submissions to distribute the uh, result. One more time, last time. 100%, 50% is always uh the memory usage is 75 megabytes i'm basically the only actual memory it, it's not really actual memory for the processing it's just the result we're just uh, transposing the matrix last time 100 percent 50 percent all right um, all right here is the entire idea of of my idea of solving this problem of course there are many other ideas i don't claim this one is to be the uh, most elegant or efficient uh, could be something to be optimized so f please comment down below and let me know how you guys approach this problem or how this um, algorithm could be optimized i appreciate that if you guys like this video and you find this video helpful or interesting please do me a favor and, and hit the like button that's going to help a lot with the youtube algorithm and i really appreciate it and don't forget to um, check out my other videos on my channel as i have accumulated quite a lot of different other videos about data structures lead code dfs bfs um, q priority q whatever to help people better prepare for the um, lead, um for the for the coding interviews um, so hopefully I'll just see you guys in just a few sh short seconds in my other videos. Thank you very much for watching.